The city of Munich was a poster child for open source with the city council offices running Limux, a custom distribution based on Ubuntu. The project ran between 2004 and 2017, with about 15,000 of the 18,000 desktops running the custom Linux distribution. Towards the latter end of the project, most systems were running a version of Linux based on Ubuntu 12.04, with some still running Ubuntu 10.04. There were also some Windows 7 and XP systems still in use for certain applications. In 2017, the project came crashing down with the city announcing it was returning to industry standard, Windows 10, at a cost of 90 million euros. A report in 2018 showed that costs had surpassed 100 million euros. In 2016, the city commissioned Accenture to carry out an external assessment on its IT services. Quids took a look through the report and found the main issues were ageing equipment, staff shortages in the IT department, with about 25% of vacancies going unfilled, as well as difficulties in transferring of files and printing. Somehow all these problems could be solved by migrating towards Windows 10. Uh, hang on, Windows 10 struggles to run on old hardware and staff shortages will still be a problem regardless of the operating system being used. Lydia Pincher, president of KDE, wrote an open letter offering assistance to fix the issues identified by the Accenture report. Linux magazine in Germany carried out an interview with former mayor Christian Uder. Quiz translated this article from German to English since Mein Deutsch ist nicht sehr gut. Christian Uder was Lord Mayor of Munich between 1993 and 2014. From 1993, he was directly elected the SPD, Social Democratic Party of Germany, Mayor of Munich three times with increasing approval ratings. Under Uda and the Green and Pink Coalition partners, the city government converted its approximately 14,000 PCs to Linux, which attracted a great deal of global IT attention. A few months after his last term, the new SPD-CSU coalition overturned the decision and announced the return to the industry standard. Christian Uda said, I am not an IT specialist who wanted to implement my own ideas or wishes on the subject in politics. I was just annoyed that Microsoft suddenly withdrew its support and forced the city of Munich to pay for a change for which she had not decided on her own as a customer. I have had to discuss this with German and European Microsoft representatives again and again. As a customer with a five-digit number of devices, you simply put the alternative as eat or die – eat our bills and pay or die with old devices that are no longer supported. So we got to know the abuse of power of a dominant group and came across the strategic question, should we remain so dependent? That's why I say this discussion has triggered Microsoft. We were dealing with a multitude of questions, not just financial dependency or price comparison or the resistance to be overcome. We have seen the methodical dependency on a provider critically and the data security, which was very controversial at Microsoft and in the professional world is still controversial. And it was about acceptance among the widest clientele in the city. Data security was a subject Quids didn't touch on before in previous videos, but he should have really since German data protection law is rather strict and many Germans do take an interest in what data is being collected about them. Although Microsoft is cheaper for some price comparison, there remains a risk factor in data security and independence is a monopoly-like provider. For us, the strategic value is also economically significant to be an independent customer who does not deliver. That's why the CSU and Microsoft have always criticised me, but I think and believe that if you turn yourself into independence from a dependence on a large-scale supplier who can put his power into price policy at the push of a button, that is an economic value. Linux Magazine asked, how big was the pressure afterwards? Really huge, and first of all from both sides. There was an enthusiastic open-source scene with hundreds in Munich alone and thousands of supporters across Europe who were encouraging them to take the step into independence and set an example that big government customers value data security. At the same time, the Microsoft side has also built up pressure. The most intense thing I personally experienced was a visit from Steve Ballmer, then Vice President of Microsoft. He stopped his skiing holiday in Switzerland to visit me. With his well-known enthusiasm with which he skips around on stage dynamically at conferences, he jumped around in my office and praised the beauty of Munich. 
But then he said I was facing a catastrophically wrong decision that I could never answer to anyone, especially a taxpayer. Funnily enough, he kept making new financial offers during the meeting. Would Munich point the way or return remorsefully to the lap of Microsoft? They calculated that Balmer has improved the financial offer by about 35%, but since we wanted to make a strategic decision and not just make a price comparison, this was not significant. A politician has to live with and learn that there are people who understand a lot more about a specific topic than you do. It was no coincidence that SUSE and IBM were very positive about Linux because they also work with open source. Microsoft was extremely negative. Both sides certainly understand a great deal of IT, but these are interest-driven insights. It is true that there were difficulties and annoyances during the changeover. That's what the office, that is, the Department of Information Technology of the Board of Directors, has always acknowledged. This is no different even with major technical changes in IT groups. But there were no unsolvable problems with Linux. Mayor Christian Uda did drive a persuasive argument for the move to open source software and evidently had to repel Microsoft's significant efforts to keep the city using their software. Eventually, hostility to the project came in a political form by a certain representative of the Green Party. The first movement came incomprehensibly from the OB candidate of the Greens. Ms Nallinger has announced from day to day the horror of her own city council faction that Lemux must go and that the order of the day is to return to Microsoft. She was then slowed down by her group again. But of course there was a mood that, if the candidate of the Greens already falls over, the position probably cannot be held anymore. Apart from the derailment of their OB candidate, the Greens have remained faithful in their advocacy of open source and Linux. I find the falling of the SPD, which took place within a year, astonishing. In 2013, they called hooray and a pioneering act, but in 2014, the penguin has to die. We do not want to be the last of the Mohicans. This is really madness that the mayor praises in one year the success so far, and then in 2014 suddenly flees from open source and wants to go back into the lap of the US group. The dissatisfied members of the administration might have needed to communicate more. Above all, we would have to spend more on modernising the IT equipment. The whole change, of course, cannot be fixed to obsolete PCs, but was a political question. The CSU had hardly any topics in the election campaign, so she needed a symbolic theme where she said, red-green was a path to ruin, we have to turn things around. Therefore, an IT topic has suddenly gained such a power of impact, even though it only affects the city employees. But I think that the political calculation of the change, of course, will not work out, and at some point the question arises, why did you risk the already won independence? Point one, why did you estimate the potential for improving data security to be so low? And point two, how much cost was incurred by the return to Windows? We do not know that until today. Linux's fate was decided in 2017 when the City Council voted 50 to 25 to migrate all of its remaining Linux computer systems to Windows 10 in 2020 as part of what was then announced as an 89 million euro IT overhaul, which included a much needed hardware upgrade to their ageing systems. I have to praise the efforts of Christian Uda in showing that a large government department can run open source although I'm not really sure why there was a need for a custom distribution when there is plenty of choice for enterprise-grade Linux, such as SUSE, which started out life in Germany. Ultimately, it's entirely up to the city what operating system they run on their computers, but this entire saga has wasted a significant amount of taxpayers' money, and if I lived in Munich, I would be quite annoyed. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all later.